Here with third year women's co-head coach Brooke Storr. Coach, coming off a big win against Nichols, always good to get a rivalry win, but it doesn't get any easier Saturday. You've got McNeese coming in, another highly charged emotional rival coming to Fraser. Yeah, I think anytime you get to play um, the in-state schools, it's a great, um, great matchup. You know, we've had some good games with both McNeese and Nichols and Southeastern and New Orleans over the last uh, three years. So I think anytime we can do that, I thought we had a great crowd last night. I know Saturday will be a good crowd. Um, it's a double header plus McNeese, you know, will bring some fans. Um, they have a hometown kid and, and Vicki Rashaw on their roster. So, you know, they'll have um, a, a big Natchitoches Central following. Um, so it'll be a fun, fun atmosphere. I think it's, it's always important to take care of your in-state games and, um, We've been able to do that other than Grambling State, so we're excited to be able to do that um, on Saturday and um, hopefully build on what we did last night. Scott and I were talking about this last night. You talked about your team wanting to find itself, find its identity. Uh, and it's a very veteran team. It's like you said, sometimes you, I know you wish you'd start faster, but they do at least have that veteran presence and the ability to understand that possessions matter, especially in the second half and it's been a theme for you this Southland season. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is they don't panic. They have um, some fight and some resiliency that they've shown um, over the last seven games in conference play. And some of that, you know, and I don't think they realize this, but we were thinking back in the last conference opponent we'd lost to was at SFA in February last year. We finished, you know, with seven wins, um, last four of the regular season and then three in the tournament and then started with five here this season. So they've, they've been through the conference for two years. They understand rivalries. They understand the importance of possession. And um, they understand that conference games are going to come down to one or two possessions. And the team that makes the fewest mistakes and capitalizes on the other team's mistakes are going to um, be successful. And you know, we didn't shoot it from the free throw line very well last night, but they were able to respond, um, shot it much better in the second half. Um, we're able to offensively execute um, at a much higher clip in that second half, and that was big for us. You talked about knowing rivals. McNeese, I think they've had a Baggett on the roster for about 30 years now, about the time since you and I were in college. But Allison Baggett is another one of those type of players that you've seen in Shea Weaver at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, Lamar has a couple that can really shoot and really score it. And she, she and Jalen Johnson give them a backcourt that's pretty similar to yours of Keisha Lee and Janelle Perez. They're dangerous. You know, I think um, either one of them are capable of getting 20 um, anytime they go out. And we've got to do a great job of limiting their quality looks. Um, you know, and that's something that we've been pretty good at um, in limiting other teams' leading scores. And that's one of our focuses um, in our game goals each um, as we face each opponent. But uh, we're going to have to be very good defensively, getting the ball stopped in transition, not allowing them to do the things that they're very comfortable with and force them to, to be a little bit uncomfortable. We touched on it a little bit last night. Keisha Lee reaches 1,000 points. Can you just expound a little bit? It is a great individual achievement, and I know that team definitely comes first, but this is a time to kind of step out and say congratulations to her. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's a tremendous milestone for anybody to reach 1,000 points. And um, for her to do it, you know, midway through her junior year, that speaks, um, you know, for her growth and maturity over the last two and a half years. And extremely proud of her. And um, she's been a big scorer for us and uh, will continue to be that for us. And um, I I'm excited for her. And, you know, she just, she told me last night, you know, we talked about it in the locker room in front of the team. And she said, uh, after the game, she said, Coach, we got we got more work to do. You know, we got to get better, and um, that's exciting. You know, I think ultimately she wants to win, and um, that's what drives her and helps make her successful and helps make our team successful. Not only are you looking for a win, the Demons are looking for a win, but Saturday's the gumbo cook-off. I know you're from Arkansas. You've lived in Louisiana long enough. Do you cook a gumbo? Do you, do I don't like cook, gumbo? period. Um, I don't cook at all. Um, Scott can tell you that, but I love gumbo, and I can eat a lot of gumbo. Um, I would love for someone to save me some gumbo. Um, I usually miss out on that because of the games, but um, it's a big event, and uh, we have some great um, chefs and cooks around here that um, you know it's it's fun to eat that good food um, the waistline probably doesn't need it but um, it's it's something that fans can get into it, it always brings out a great crowd and um, you know kind of adds to the history and tradition of, of game days here at Prather.